This year marks the 12th anniversary of Fukushima earthquake and nuclear meltdown. How people gonna deal with the contaminated water? Let's explore it today. There's one particular Chinese panda, Yaya, that has raised many concerns among Chinese netizens. Let's hear her story. I'm Saina. Welcome to Facts Tell. You may still remember these images from 12 years ago when a massive earthquake hit the northeastern coast of Japan. After the initial quake, the backup system managed to prevent a meltdown at a Fukushima nuclear plant. But later, a 15-meter tsunami knocked out cooling systems to the reactors, three of which failed. That's why people now have to deal with more than 1 million tons of contaminated water, which have been used to cool the melted reactors. March 11 this year marks the 12th anniversary of the Fukushima earthquake and a nuclear meltdown in Japan. Seriously, if something happened a decade ago, I totally don't care. And nowadays, things tend to easily slip from people's memory, you know. But this one's different. The impact on the surrounding environment and the public health continues. There are so many aspects of people's life that have been hugely influenced by the nuclear accident. I mean, living conditions, food, and the local tourism, everything. Even the neighboring countries have expressed concerns repeatedly. And let me tell you this. One of the reasons people are still worried is because the measures that the Japanese government and Tokyo Electric Power Company took were not enough to reassure people. The TAPCO uses some kind of system to treat radioactive water. The system is called ALPS. But the thing is, some dangerous isotopes could still slip through that system, such as cesium and strontium. This is also something that TAPCO was forced to acknowledge back in 2018. You have to admit that these additional nuclides were present in more than 70% of its tanks. I mean, look at it, 70%. But guess what? In 2021, the Japanese government announced plans anyway to discharge the treated nuclear wastewater into the ocean. <laughs> Wow, this decision has infuriated the Fukushima's fishing industry and roused, let's say, a whole lot of worries about the local people and the international community. It's really hard for us. We used to fish throughout the year, and everyone enjoyed eating our fresh catch. Now there's no happiness left in our lives. Japan, if openly can do it, we can't imagine the follower. You'll be more follower. And then they say, he did it. I, I, why, why, why can't me? So I think this is the problem now. So Japanese, this action is not tolerable. It should be punished. It should be criticized. Even the neighboring countries, they have also expressed strong concerns. We plan to relay our people's concerns and opposition to this plan to the Japanese government. Japan's decision is absolutely unacceptable. The decision was made unilaterally without enough consultations with its closest neighbor, South Korea. Japan should re-evaluate the issue and refrain from wantonly discharging the wastewater before reaching consensus with all stakeholders and the IAEA through full consultations. China will continue to watch closely the developments of the matter together with the international community, and it reverses the right to further response. Now, there's something quite interesting said about the International Atomic Energy Agency. The Fukushima accident is the worst nuclear power plant accident since Chernobyl in 1986. Now, they also have some differences. Nobody knows just how much radioactive material has spilled into the ocean, but here is a comparison. During the peak of the Chernobyl incident, 1,000 becquerels per cubic meter of water was detected. At the peak of Fukushima, it was 100,000 becquerels. But Japan decided to start to release this 1 million tons of radioactive water into the ocean this year, 2023. And Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said he would even personally decide when the contaminated water from Fukushima would be released. I mean, wait a second. Who gave Kishida the power to decide to release some water that could affect half the planet? 
And what is weird about all this is there are not many opposing voices among the Western mainstream media. Just try to imagine this. If it were China going to release some radioactive water into the ocean, the Western media will be explode. All right, that's enough about the water. Let's talk about something cuter. Pandas. I mean, they are the kings of being chill. Eating, sleeping, and basking in the sun are the top priorities of all those furry bears. They never worry about the China-U.S. relationship. They will just tell you this. Man, there's nothing more important than enjoying the moment. Yet a video taken by the netizens in the U.S. at the end of February showing Panda Yaya's living condition at the Memphis Zoo has raised concerns about her health. Unlike most pandas who are chubby and cute, Yaya looks rather skinny. Her condition has sparked online rumors of neglect at the zoo. The before and after photos of Yaya in China and the U.S. have been circulating on social media, which has angered many people. Now they have been calling for her to be brought home to China. In 2003, Yaya from Beijing and Lolo from Shanghai arrived at the Memphis Zoo in the U.S. state of Tennessee as part of a joint conservation and research project between China and America. The agreement was initially for 10 years, but it was extended by 10 more years in 2013. Earlier in February, Yaya's male partner, Giant Panda Lolo, passed away at the zoo at age of 25, and now Yaya also got sick. The deaths and illness of two pandas in the Memphis Zoo prompted many people to question whether the zoo deliberately mistreated the furry animal. Attention has been paid to the living condition of pandas in various countries around the world. Now, in recent days, many natives have rushed to their local zoos to check out pandas, from Bauer Zoo to France to the Vienna Zoo in Austria. When I look at my phone these days, it's full of pandas from all over the world. I mean, I didn't realize we have this many pandas taking overseas holidays. For one second, I thought Yaya's dream might be to become a panda supermodel. Then I look at her age. Well, I think the best she could contend is in the senior arena, because the average lifespan of a panda is about 20 to 30 years. In fact, usually. Only pandas in captivity can live more than 20 years, so Yaya is considered a senior panda now. And the Chinese Association of Zoology Gardens also clarified that Yaya's health has been evaluated by several organizations in both China and the U.S. It concluded the pandas are well cared at the Memphis Zoo, and there is no abuse of pandas. And if you really look into this, you will find that there are also other senior pandas living in China, and they will get quite skinny if they get sick. Now, Yaya's lease will expire in April, and the Beijing Zoo will send staff, including vets and keepers, to the U.S. next week, and will accompany the beloved panda Yaya back to China. So I was very proud to be a Memphian and be here at the Memphis Zoo.、Um, and we're the last zoo in the United States with the pandas, and my heart is saddened. I didn't know they were leaving so soon. Oh. On the project of joint panda conservation, we believe the kind of heart, the kind of heart to the people of China and the U.S. share the same love for the protection of giant pandas. I mean, look at them. If they were in charge of any geopolitical disputes, there would be no conflicts at all. Now, China lends pandas to other countries as goodwill gesture. We've been friendly all the time, seeking win-win and construction instead of blame and destruction. And today, such gestures continue. All right, that's for today. Thanks for watching. If you like our show, remember to click like and subscribe. I'm Sina. Until next time.